Hey guys, it's Andy and I'm here at COS and nobody's here today. Nobody's here because classes here have gone um, to alternative format, which means they've gone online, um, which happens to mean that I have a bunch of materials that were supposed to be used that aren't going to be used anymore. So I thought I'd do one of my favorite reactions for you, um, which is where I take an aluminum can, I dissolve it in potassium hydroxide solution, and then I add some sulfuric acid and chill it and I get alum, which happens to be a white powder. You take a, an aluminum can and you get a white powder out of it. It's gonna be awesome. So um, stick with me and we're gonna do that reaction today. Okay, so the first thing we need is a can. I drank this Dr. Pepper this morning um, and I'm just gonna cut it up into um, about five centimeter square pieces. And I'll show that to you once I'm done with it. But I just so I cut my can up. These are about five square centimeters each. Um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to use some steel wool to take off the paint and there's just like kind of a plasticky coating on the inside. So I'm gonna use steel wool to take off the paint and the coating and just get it down to aluminum. And then I'm gonna cut these into um, uh, little tiny squares and um, add them to my potassium hydroxide. Um, it happens to be 1.4 molar, but um, it could be a different concentration and a different amount. I use 25 mils of um, 1.4 molar potassium hydroxide to dissolve this with a little bit of heat. Um, you're gonna see that it makes bubbles. That is hydrogen gas evolving. And I'll write out that reaction for you right here. Okay, our first um, reaction, we're going to take uh, the solid aluminum that we had and react it with potassium hydroxide in aqueous solution. And um, it looks like potassium is going to be a spectator, but we're going to leave it in there because it shows up in our final product. product. And we're going to make the tetrahydroxyl aluminate ion when we react it. And we're going to see some bubbles. That is hydrogen gas. That's our first reaction.
Okay, for this next part of the reaction, we're going to take our last reaction, um, our aluminum tetrahydroxylate, and we're going to react it with sulfuric acid. I'm using nine molar sulfuric acid, and that's going to make our alum salt. So these are all the components of the alum salt. part you're gonna see me taking um, the uh, alum which is still in solution I'm going to filter it and then I'm gonna chill it and um, uh, the reason I'm gonna chill it is because alum is soluble in water but it's less soluble in cold water so uh, you're gonna see me chill it take its temperature um, and then you will see some white crystals that are forming at the bottom of that solution that's the actual alum salt that's precipitating out of the solution. Um, so this is our final product. It's a hydrate, um, which means it tends to have 12 waters stuck around it at all times. So even when it looks like a dry crystal, it's got um, 12 waters around it. So that's what we're making uh, at the end of this is, uh, so you're gonna see that now.
last thing you're going to see here is um, I'm going to uh, filter it with a Buchner funnel. So there's going to be filter paper um, on a, looks like a white funnel. Uh, I'm going to uh, filter my crystals using vacuum filtration. And then I'm going to draw air over them for quite a while to dry them. They're still going to be the hydrate, um, but I'm going to get all the water and methanol that I'm rinsing it with off. And then I'm going to mask them. And then finally at the end, I'm going to share all of the data that I got so you can do your own calculations if that's what's supposed to happen here. Okay, here is all the raw data I got today. Um, at the beginning, the mass of my beaker was 65.450 grams, and the mass of my beaker and my aluminum was 65.961 grams. You can figure out the mass of aluminum by using these two pieces of data. You can also use a periodic table to find the molar mass of aluminum. That may help you later. Um, the temperature of aluminum while I was working, or the alum at the end was 5.4 degrees Celsius. Um, the mass of my second beaker uh, was 65.442 grams. The mass of my second beaker plus the alum was 72.231 grams. So you can figure out using these two pieces of data what my mass of alum was. Also, what you're going to need is the molar mass of alum. You can figure that out using a periodic table. Here's the formula for alum, potassium aluminum sulfate uh, dodecahydrate, I think. And then if you're so inclined, you need a balanced chemical equation for this. And you can figure out, using all of this data, my percent yield. Um, some of you are going to get a video where I actually do all of these calculations for you, but for those of you that don't, good luck. Well, that was super fun. We took a can, a piece of aluminum, like this, and we made a white powder. And it only, I mean, in reality, it only took me like 40 minutes, I think, to, to get there. Um, so I took a can and I dissolved it in potassium hydroxide and then acidified it with sulfuric acid and um, made alum. Pretty awesome. So thanks for chilling with me today. Um, keep socially isolating or socially distancing, whatever it is we're doing, um, sparkling isolation, and um, keep on sciencing.